Hello everyone, welcome back to another informative episode of Agrowords and Phrases. In this episode, we are going to talk about photorespiration. If you recall in previous episodes, we did touch on respiration and we also did touch on C3 photosynthesis or C3 pathway. So by now, you should have a general understanding of what occurs within these two processes, C3 pathway and respiration. Now, please also bear in mind that photorespiration and respiration they have certain slight differences and just stay tuned to this video and you will understand it fully now let us give a basic definition of photorespiration photorespiration is basically the enzyme rubisco binding to oxygen instead of carbon dioxide now if you recall in the c3 pathway the enzyme rubisco actually binds to co2 however in photorespiration or when photorespiration occurs the enzyme rubisco does not bind to carbon dioxide it binds to oxygen instead and that is exactly why photorespiration occurs because the enzyme rubisco chooses to bind with oxygen instead of co2 that is basically the bottom line of what basically drives photorespiration or what causes photorespiration now photorespiration normally occurs within c3 plants and if you recall we did touch on c3 pathway c3 photosynthesis so you should have an idea of what i'm talking about now if not please check out the video and have the basic understanding of what c3 pathway is now as i said photorespiration normally occurs within c3 plants however you don't normally see it in c4 and cam plants because they are basically specially adapted to tolerate high temperatures now the next question is why does photorespiration occur the main reason for photorespiration is because as i said before the enzyme rubisco binds to oxygen but why why does the enzyme rubisco binds to oxygen well there are a couple of reasons one of the main reason is high temperature so when the temperature is high what happens is that the stomata of the plant will close and you know that when the stomata is closed it stops the carbon dioxide from going into the leaf through the stomata and you know that the plant needs carbon dioxide to to, to, to run the photosynthesis process to create sugars for the plant. When the stomata is closed and CO2 cannot get in, then you will not have any carbon dioxide to drive the Calvin cycle to produce sugars for the plant. So what happens is, when CO2 is blocked out from coming in, you find that the enzyme Rubisco will bind to oxygen. That is one reason. Now, another reason is that at high temperatures, the solubility of oxygen is much faster than CO2 so you'll find that Rubisco will basically bind to oxygen faster than how it binds to CO2 and also at high temperatures you can say that Rubisco is not really picky when the temperatures are high so it will basically bind to CO2 or oxygen so carbon dioxide or oxygen it, it's not really picky however at high temperatures, when the stomatas are closed, you can understand that CO2 is become, becoming limited because the, the, the cell is basically using up the CO2 to produce energy for the plant. So therefore, the CO2 is basically depleting, but oxygen is building up. So you'll find that if it, if it gets this, the carbon dioxide, it will take it, but the carbon dioxide will be limited, so it will, do, it will be more um likely to bind to oxygen and those are basically some of the reasons why photorespiration occur now let us talk about the process of photorespiration now as i said before photorespiration occurs within c3 plants now co2 comes in and it binds to the enzyme rubisco however in photorespiration co2 will not bind to rubisco oxygen will bind to rubisco instead of co2 and when oxygen binds to rubisco and i already outlined why oxygen would bind to rubisco 
So when oxygen binds to Rubisco, it creates two molecules. It creates a PGA molecule and it creates a PG molecule. Now, this PGA molecule that it, it, it creates is called phosphoglycerate. So it's basically one molecule of a three carbon phosphoglycerate. It creates that and then it creates one molecule of phosphoglycolate. So five phos the phosphoglycolate is actually a two carbon molecule. So first it produces one molecule of three carbon phosphoglycerate and then it produces one molecule of two carbon phosphoglycolate. That is what is produced. Now, of course, the phosphoglycerate continues into the Calvin cycle, but the phosphoglycolate, the plant, find ways to get rid of that, right? Now, when the plant is trying to get rid of phosphoglycolate, it uses energy. And one, once it is using energy, that means carbon dioxide or CO2 would have been a part of the process because you need the CO2 to create energy, right? So what happened is that while the plant is getting rid of the phosphoglycolate, it is using up energy, right? It is using up energy and it is, it is using up CO2 and it is creating oxygen, right? So, so that is what really happens. And you know, some people might argue that photorespiration is not good for plants. In my opinion, in some ways, photorespiration is good because what photorespiration does, it, it kind of act as a, 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 a signaling process. In my opinion, it is saying to the plant that, look, we are low on, on carbon dioxide, or guess what? The time is getting too hot, so the stomatas are closing and the amount of CO2 that needs to get in is not coming in. So you find that the CO2 is depleting, but oxygen, oxygen is basically increasing. So it, uh, to me, photorespiration can hack as a, a, a signaling mechanism, you know, to signal certain stress hormone, to trigger certain stress hormone in the plant. And once certain stress hormone in the plant is triggered, then the plant know exactly what is happening and know exactly what to do. So to me, photorespiration is not all that bad. Of course, it's use, it uses energy, but remember, in the photorespiration process, it, it also creates one molecule of phosphoglycerate, the three carbon uh, compound, phosphoglycerate. So, and then phosphoglycerate goes directly in the Calvin cycle to help to create um, sugars. So, it, it, while it, 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 it creates a compound that the plant does not want, or the plant always try to get rid of, it also creates a usable um, compound, which is the phosphoglycerate that it, it uses, right? So, while it is using energy, it is still creating energy, right? But the, 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 the essence of this is that you don't want photorespiration to be to always happening. As I said before, it happens regardless of what you do, it will, it will happen, right? It will happen. And studies have shown that about 33% of the time, photorespiration occurs. But in order to kind of minimize the, 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 the impact, because we know that when the stomata is closed, less CO2 can go inside the leaf, can diffuse into the leaf. So once less CO2 is going in the leaf, then you know that that will have a negative impact on photosynthesis, right? And once less CO2 is going in, then Rubisco will, will basically bind. Even though Rubisco have a higher binding affinity for CO2, if CO2 is not present, it will bind to oxygen. So one of the things that we can, one of the things that we can do is we can create that optimal temperature range, you know, not going into high, high, high temperatures where it, it, the, the heat is very high or the, 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 the temperature has a, a severe um, effect on the plant to the extent where it closes its stomata. You don't want your plants to close their stomata. You want to always have that controlled environment where the, the plants are able to open their stomata and give you that full, full photosynthesis process right through the, the, the time when it is exposed to the, 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 the sunlight. So again, this is what photorespiration is all about. 
I hope you have learned something. I hope you understand the process of photorespiration and understanding how it is different or what aspect of photorespiration makes it different from respiration itself. And uh, you know, we are talking, and remember, this photorespiration that we are talking about, we are talking about it as it relates to plants. So again, I hope you have learned, I hope you understand the process. And as usual, please subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you again in another video. Thank you.